It's time for your weekly financial workout with your elite personal trainers, Ryan and Bob Payne. We'll guide you to build a stronger and more robust financial plan. It's time to pump you up. This is the No Pain, No Gain Financial Podcast. Welcome to No Pain, No Gain Financial Podcast. I'm your host, Ryan Payne, president of Payne Capital Management, along with our chief investment officer, the man with the plan, and who happens to be my father, Bob Payne. We've got a great podcast for you this morning. We're going to talk about taking out the financial trash, going into 2020, and get rid of all that proverbial financial garbage, discard it from your life so you can go in ready to go in 2020. We're going to talk about social security myths. There's hundreds of ways to take social security. No one has the right way to do it, only the right way for you. We're going to talk about the right way to take social security so you optimize it for retirement. Along with this week's financial propaganda, we're going to cover everything from what the news media has been saying this week about the markets, about fear, and yes, those pesky annuities. What are those insurance companies selling now? Why you need to avoid it? Check it out. We've got a great show. Bob, let's hop to it. Let's talk about going through your financial life here at the end of the year. And let's talk about the things we might want to throw out, the proverbial financial trash in our retirement life that we just want to discard for the new year. And one I think about right now at the markets at all-time highs is you're probably taking too much risk in your portfolio. Hey, Rye, it's not only the last week of the year, it's the last week of the decade. It's been a big boom and bull market. It's time to reduce that risk. I don't care what you've been doing over the last 10 years. Right now, all of you have way too much risk in your portfolio, more risk than you need to achieve your goals. And that's the good bad news of being in a booming bull market for this is going to be a year 11 is just by default, the amount that you have in the market keeps going up because it keeps going higher. But the problem is when the tide finally goes out, as we like to say, you can see it's been swimming naked. And that's going to be a bad place to be if you're not managing the risk in your portfolio. So what do you tell me, Ry? There's creeps in your portfolio. You got risk creep, right? Every year it creeps up. It looks good. I mean, why do I want to get rid of something that's doing so well? Well, the problem is you're not going to know that you have too much risk in your portfolio to after the fact. And after the fact is a bad place to be because the market goes down 40, 50 percent, Bob, like it did back in 2008. Well, it's too late. Now you just saw your portfolio go in half and there's nothing you can do about it. And that's a very dangerous place to be. You know, Ryan, I'm looking at you right now. You're young, you're handsome. You don't have any scar tissue in your stomach lining like your old man. I've been through this rodeo a few times and I've seen it happen every cycle. You know, the risk creeps up in your portfolio. You feel really good. Your portfolio is at an all time high and we get hit with a black swan event and boom, you could be losing 30, 40 percent. Let's not let that happen anymore. Yeah. So the question you want to ask yourself is if we were in a market like 2008, how would your portfolio hold up? And in fact, we actually have a modeling software now where we can take your portfolio. I did this for a couple this past week. And I show them they would have been down over 60% in a down market based on today. In their case, I would have lost a million dollars in their portfolio. And I just asked them, would you be able to handle that right now? And they're only two years from retirement. They're like, no way. Well, you know, Ry, I just ordered smelling salts for the office because we show people this. They actually get faint. They get uh, you know, all the blood drains out of their face. They almost fall over. I mean, you're looking at a $5 million portfolio. It's suddenly worth $2.4 million. Man, that's a buzzkill. Yeah, that is a proverbial buzzkill. You know, other financial trash you may want to discard in this upcoming year, and we see this all the time, is there's a lot of hidden fees in your portfolio. You don't know you're paying. And by reducing those, that's a lot more money in your pocket, especially when you're starting to draw from your portfolio. You want more money in your pocket, believe me. Yeah, right. You're so right. But they're not hidden. They're in plain sight, right? If you have mutual funds, you have high costs. You have an annuity, you have high costs. You have products that are wrapped in a thin veneer of insurance, you have high cost. And that's just the beginning of it. Yeah, it is. Because you might think, hey, my advisor is only charging me 1% a year. Anytime I hear that, I know you don't know the other charges you're actually being charged because you can't see them. A lot of these mutual funds, like you mentioned, Bob, the fees are hidden inside the portfolio, unless you want to read that prospectus, which is, you know, pretty thick. And it's going to take you about a 300 pages before you find those numbers. You really want to have someone do that analysis so you know exactly what you're paying, not only on the fees you can see, but the fees that you don't. So wait a minute. Are you recommending that everybody throw their ambient away and just get annuity prospectuses, mutual fund prospectuses, read them at night, they'll sleep soundly like a baby? 
<laughs> you'll, I guarantee you'll definitely sleep, but I don't think that's the best use of your time. And that's why we do our 360 financial portal where we'll do an x-ray of all the fees in your portfolio. But it's so important you know what you're paying because you can reduce cost. In some cases, like I met a couple this week, we're able to reduce cost by $15,000 every single year. I mean, that's a nice, I don't know, you could buy a nice for 15000 a year. You could uh, lease a Ferrari to- for that 15000 right? I mean, it's like, you know, there's lots of different ways to get these fancy cars. But you know, the other thing that I'm starting to see in every single case that we work with is they have a lot of money in cash. And that yes. cash isn't even getting a money market return. You know, these firms out there, they're paying you one tenth of one percent or nothing because they're allowed to, as opposed to giving you what the real rate of return is. If you're bragging about getting a two percent rate of return at your bank, you shouldn't be bragging because you got to pay hey, taxes. We just had, on a, that 2%. we had a client come in from a major wirehouse. They were getting 14 basis points. That's, you know, less than two tenths of one percent. Right. It's just it's highway robbery. Yeah. And again, we talk about this a lot, but you're losing against purchasing power. Inflation is somewhere above 2% every year. And again, if you're not getting over at least 3 or 4% on your money because you have to factor taxes in, you're losing against purchasing power. And that's a very bad place to be in retirement. You know, right? everybody's come in to see us in the last three months and said the same thing. How come you talk about me every week on the radio show? I have high cost mutual funds. I'm getting no return on my cash. I have way too much cash in my portfolio. Everybody's come in has had way more cash than they needed, and they're suddenly waking up to the fact that we're getting a great rate of return on their money. We can give a positive return. If you're looking to learn a little more about some of the things we talked about on this podcast, but you're not quite ready for a one-on-one phone call, no problem. Check out our most recent guide that helps you learn the ins and outs of financial and retirement planning. It's free, and you can download it right now by texting the word BULLISH, that's BULLISH, B-U-L-L-I-S-H, to 555-888. That's texting the word bullish to 555-888. You can download our latest guide, Five Ways to Maximize Your Retirement Accounts. Just give you some ideas on how you can save on taxes through health savings accounts, 401ks, Roth 401ks, Roth conversions. We give you some simple common sense ways to use retirement accounts to save on taxes. Simply text the word bullish to 555-888. That's the word bullish to 555 555- 888, or check out the show notes for the episode at bebullish.com for a link. Let's see what people are saying about those other financial guys out there. I wish you could just shut your big yapper. Looks like you'd better stick with us. So Bob, one of the most important decisions you need to make when you're building your financial plan is invariably going to be, how do I take social security? So I thought we could discuss some of the bigger myths about Social Security so that our listeners can make the best decision. And the first one is, there's a perfect time to start collecting Social Security. Oh, well, well, wait a minute. Let's go back a second. Let's go back a second. You told me at dinner the other night that the most important decision someone has to make is not their Social Security, but it's how much money they leave their son in the will. (laughs) You know what? That's a good point. So Social Security second, but first... Okay, let's talk about the second most important thing then. (laughs) <laughs> All right. So let's talk about the second most important thing, Social Security. So why isn't there a perfect time for everyone to take it? I mean, there's so many different variables. It's impossible to say that. Well, it's like anything else the government does. It's, you know, it makes it difficult because last time I checked, there were a gazillion. Was it a gazillion or a trillion gazillion ways for you to claim your Social Security? At least that, that's what you told me last week, right? I mean, it's definitely a couple of hundred. I don't know the exact amount, but because there's so many, what you have to start thinking about is, you know, the way I'm going to take it is definitely going to be different than my neighbor or maybe my sister or my brother, because your situation is unique and it's going to have a lot to do with the other income that you have coming in, your tax bracket. So there's a lot of things you have to decide when taking your Social Security benefit to maximize it for yourself. Yeah, I mean, they have rules, but the rules apply differently to you. I mean, let's face it, we're all unique. We're all different. But when it comes to Social Security, you know, even a year difference in age can make the uniqueness of your claiming strategy. Remember, Ry, you you told me two years ago that I should claim my Social Security, even though I'm not fully retired, just because mom can get half of what I get and substantially more than if we waited till we were 70. That's right. And then if you have a younger spouse is another reason you may want to wait later to take it. Now, if you and your spouse are the same age, but let's just say, Bob, you stop working before you're 62. Well, if you're not showing a lot of income, there could be a good reason to actually take it early. Because one of the other myths or one of the other concerns is, is Social Security even going to be there? 
What do you think about that? Well, I mean, it's a, they say that all the time. It's going to be broke by, I mean, I've been hearing this since I got out of college, uh, that, you know, Social Security is going to run out of money in 2020, 2035. But let's face it, there's no government agency program that ever runs out of money. You know, they just keep printing it down in the basement at the uh, at the Capitol. <laughs> yeah. Now, the other thing they might do is they keep delaying. So the younger you are, the later that you're going to be able to take it or be eligible for it. But going back to taking it at 62, if you're not showing a lot of income at that time, it may make sense because your break even if you waited to take it later, even though it's a higher benefit, can be almost 80 years old. And then I always have a question for all my clients, Bob, and that's how lucky do you feel? <laughs> because it's just going to depend on how old you are. You feel lucky, punk? You know, I think of uh, Clint Eastwood yeah. when, uh, you know, and, and Dirty Harry. But, you know, hey, look, I write, sooner is better than later, more is better than less. What you have to find out is what is your best strategy, right? It's going to be different. I had a couple in my office this week. I suggested the same thing you recommended to me. They're a year difference in age. They don't have that ability to to have half, you know, claim for his spouse. So everybody's different. Everybody's unique. You need to run that projection. And you know the other thing you need to do, Ry? You need to run that projection in concert with all the money you have. No, exactly right. Because other incomes coming in can have a big effect on whether you should take it early or not. Because again, even though the benefit might look great to take it later, you might think to yourself, well, I don't need the money right now. But you could pocket that money. You could invest that money, which again, could be a much bigger pile of money than you waiting later to take it at a higher benefit. So all those things, to your point, Bob, have to go back to, it really becomes a portfolio decision because by taking it early too, that's less money you have to pull from from other assets. So you know, these are I think myth that, that I've been about. seeing in almost every meeting, especially because a lot of my clients are you know baby boomers like me or older, and they're saying, well, Bob, I can't take my Social Security because I'm still working. It'll be fully taxed. You know, there's this big tax myth that if you take it earlier while you're still working, that the government's just going to take it all back. Yeah, and that's actually not true. So if you're at full retirement for a lot of us, it's 66, depending on when you get your paper, what it says, 85% of it's taxed, but that's all the time. If you wait later, it's still going to be 85% taxed, but that's still not fully taxed. Now, what you got to be concerned about is if it's 62, taking it early, that's where you can really get penalized if you're still working. So these are the numbers you really have to run through, run through with your accountant, your financial advisor, but the tax situation is going to be a big component. You need to understand what taxes you're going to be paying at different ages, and that'll really help determine when's the best time to take it for you. I think that's so true, Rob, but I got to tell you, you know, one of the sweetest things ever, because if you've been paying taxes your whole life like I have, there's nothing better and actually getting money back from the IRS and depositing into your account, and it doesn't come with an audit. You know, every time I got an IRS envelope, I used to get really nervous, like, oh my goodness, what did I do wrong? Now I get an envelope, and it's money, it's cash, it's a check, it's for me. Greatest thing in the world. They're still going to tax you on it, but I guess that's a whole other conversation. So I guess- Yeah, I know. It's nice being able to take it out of, of the IRS as opposed to giving it to the IRS. It is one of the sweeter things in life you know, when it comes to managing money. Yeah. So Bob, I think bottom line here is you really need to run those numbers. You need to run them in concert with the rest of your financial plan. If you're not doing that, you're not going to optimize that benefit. And, you know, that can have a huge impact in a negative or positive way, depending on how you do it. If you're enjoying this podcast, if you're getting the knowledge that we believe you're getting out of it, we want to offer you a free consultation to make sure you have the best financial plan possible. We call it our Total Financial Master Plan. If you qualify, here's what you can expect. We're going to look at everything from taxes. Have you optimized your financial plan for taxes? We're going to show you how to save on taxes so there's more money in your pocket, not the government's. We're going to look at income. Income is so much more reliable than the ups and downs of the market. We're going to show you how to optimize or increase the income on your portfolio. And we're going to look at diversification. What hidden risks do you have in your portfolio you don't know about? We're going to show you how to bulletproof and safeguard your portfolio, protect it for retirement. To see if you qualify, simply text the words free financial review to 844-752-6692. That's the words free financial review and text them to 844-752-6692. See if you qualify for our holistic total financial master plan. Financial propaganda of the week. This is where Bob and I scour the daily financial news, call it the best advice, worst advice the financial media has recently been broadcasting, so you can make the best decisions with your planning and investing. So, Bob, you and I, we read pretty much everything every week. 
What kind of financial propaganda? What do our listeners need to stay away from more than anything else this week? In your humble well, right, they always have to stay away from financial propaganda because the number one goal of financial propaganda is to keep the uninformed poor. Yes, and we don't want to do that. We want to know the no, right. We don't thing want to do. you to be poor. We want you to be wealthy. We want you to enjoy, you know, your hard work and the hard money you worked hard for. So over the last ten years, every week. We read articles, they tell you, don't invest, it's too risky, you know, you got Jupiter's going to hit Mars, something bad's going to happen, there's going to be a black swan event. So now I get this article and says, brace yourself, the next 10 years, the returns are going to be horrible, so don't bother even investing, you're not even going to make any money because all the returns have already been made. I, I, I saw a couple articles like that as well, they've been going around right now, and you're absolutely right, it's, it's, there's always anti-investing, and we know that the cost of living is going up. And the one thing we all have to think about pragmatically, whether we're saving for retirement or retired now, is basically every 20 years, your purchasing power gets cut in half. So every million dollars you have today is going to be worth $500,000. So if it's not invested, you're really going to be in big trouble. So that concerns me, Bob, that the financial media is telling you that not being invested makes sense because it really does. And especially as we know, the cost of living is going up. Well, these are the same people, right, that predicted that the stock market would be mediocre this year because it was mediocre last year. You know, last I checked, we just had the best year we've had in 25 years. Yeah. And we talk about this all the time, but investing is about income, right? It's not about if the market's going to go up this year, down this year. All the strategists are out there already making their predictions for next year, which they'll probably get wrong again because they got them wrong this year. But I digress. But more importantly is we have to start thinking about is your income plan, right? It's like, hey, I got to figure out how much income I have coming in retirement and how does my portfolio generate enough income so I'm not worried about the ups and downs of the market. And that really has nothing to do with is this going to be a good year in the stock market, a bad year, Bob? Well, you know, it really doesn't matter, right? Because, you know, 2018, everybody had high hopes. It turned out to be a bad year. And then 2019 turned out to be a fabulous year. What is so important is you have to make sure your money's working and you're getting paid as you go. That's why they have dividends. That's why they have interest on bonds. See, if you have a diversified portfolio of high quality investments, you actually make money every day. And so that's the important thing is that you invest based on your goals. Don't listen to these yahoos in the press. You know, don't listen to the noise. Their sole job is to keep you poor. They want to keep you down. Don't listen to them. Listen to us. Yeah, Bob, to sum it up. 2018 was a bad year in the market. 2019 has been a good year in the market. But the one thing that didn't change is if your portfolios generate income, it, in, it generates the same income both years. So you've got to have an income plan for retirement. The other thing I found this week is investors bought $12.5 billion of a thing called an index-linked variable annuity in the first three quarters of 2019. Now, right off the bat, that sounds like a very exotic investment, Bob. I don't think I want to own. Well, first of all, right now I know why you haven't slept this week. This has got to really be disturbing news for you. <laughs> I'll tell you why it's disturbing, because the way these things work are they say, well, we give you downside protection in the market unless the market goes down really big, then we don't protect you anymore. So well, that sounds kind of it sounds like a great deal to me. Well, it sounds great. I mean, we have um, we have some guy in Philadelphia that advertises heavily selling these indexed linked annuities. And he calls it crash proof retirement. And I had a client come in the other day and said, Hey, Bob, you know, this sounds pretty good. You know, why wouldn't I want something like this? And, you know, hey, right, do you actually get the return of the stock market when you're in one of these products? No. And I'll tell you why. So, number one, you're not getting fully protected on the downside. But the other thing is they strip out the dividends. Now, to put that in layman's terms, the, the market every year pays income. We just talked about the income. These annuities take that completely out of the equation. And the problem with that is, over the long term, that's 40% of your return. <laughs> so you're taking out one of the most important parts of the return of owning stocks and telling you that you're going to get a market-like return. That's just a flat-out lie, Bob. Hey, Rod, the S&P 500 went up almost 30% this year. So, you know, wouldn't you want to get the 30% return if you're invested in the S&P 500? I would really like to get that, Bob. Yeah. Wouldn't it be a bummer if I told you you're only getting eight because I put you into this index linked annuity variable investment that uh, limits your upside? <laughs> I'd be really, yes. I would be very, very unhappy with that. And that's the point because you get limited on the upside. They only protect some of your downside. Then they strip out the dividends, which are one of the most important parts of your return. Bob, I call that 
buyer beware. That is not a good deal. And what if you need your money, right? What if you decide, like my client did a couple of years ago, but to buy a restaurant and said, hey, Bob, you know, I need to take a quarter million dollars out of the portfolio and buy a restaurant, which he's made millions of dollars on. And, you know, of course, I was able to give it, give him the money the next day. But he had one of these investments say, oh, sorry, you can't have your money. You might be able to take 10, 15 percent in any given year, but you don't have access to all of your principal. And to me, Bob, that's very counterintuitive. The closer you are to retirement and being dependent on your mo on your money, the more access to your money you want to have. And annuity does the exact opposite. And so I is this why these insurance companies don't advertise that we're going to give you an investment where you don't get your dividends. You only get half or a third of the upside when the market goes up. We protect you to downside only if it goes down a little bit. But if you have a crash like 2008, man, you're out of luck. You know what the moral of the story here is, Bob? It's good What's to be that, the buddy? insurance company. <laughs> so that's about it. Well, I'll tell you, next life I come back, I'm coming as an insurance company. I'm going to give money away to all the people that have gotten taken advantage of by these folks over our lifetime. Very benevolent of you, Bob. And I think our listeners appreciate that. You heard it here Thank first. You, if you're enjoying this podcast, if you're getting the knowledge that we believe you're getting out of it, we want to offer you a free consultation to make sure you have the best financial plan possible. We call it our Total Financial Master Plan. If you qualify, here's what you can expect. We're going to look at everything from taxes. Have you optimized your financial plan for taxes? We're going to show you how to save on taxes so it's more money in your pocket, not the government's. We're going to look at income. Income is so much more reliable than the ups and downs of the market. We're going to show you how to optimize or increase the income on your portfolio. And we're going to look at diversification. What hidden risks do you have in your portfolio you don't know about? We're going to show you how to bulletproof and safeguard your portfolio, protect it for retirement. To see if you qualify, simply text the words free financial review to 844 752 6692. That's the words free financial review and text them to 844 752 6692. See if you qualify for our holistic total financial master plan. Hey, thanks for listening. We'll have another great show on tap next week. Don't forget to subscribe to the No Pain, No Gain financial podcast on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, and everywhere else you can get podcasts. If you're looking to listen to past episodes or to access resources mentioned on the show, check out the full show notes of the program by clicking the link in the description of today's show or by visiting bebullish.com. For Bob Payne, I'm Ryan Payne, and as always, be bullish. Information provided on today's show is provided for information purposes only and does not constitute investment, tax, or legal advice. Information has been obtained from sources that are deemed to be reliable, but their accuracy and completeness cannot be guaranteed. Always consult with an investment, legal, or tax professional before taking any action.